Chapter 5 Natural Vegetation and Wildlife What is natural vegetation? Well, it refers to a plant community which has grown naturally without human aid and has been left undisturbed. So that is natural vegetation. Now remember, every vegetation is not natural. There are crops and fruits which are grown and cultivated by human beings. So they are also part of vegetation but not natural vegetation. So in this chapter, we will read about the natural vegetation as well as the wildlife of our country. Now the term flora and fauna. Flora means plants. So just remember this word as flower and the word fauna in which A is there after F that means animal. So remember it this way and you will not be confused between flora and fauna. So in a country like India, there is a huge diversity in plants and animal kingdom. You will find many species of plants and animal. Now there are certain factors that are responsible for such a diversity. So let's read about each one of them in brief. We will divide the factors into two broad categories relief and climate. Under relief, we have land and soil. Land has a direct and indirect effect on the natural vegetation. You will not find same type of plants everywhere. For example, mountains and plateaus will have different kinds of trees. And if a land is fertile, we know that is suitable for agriculture. I hope you get it as to how land has an effect on the vegetation cover. Coming to the soil, just like land, even soil varies from place to place. We have some six to seven types of soil that are found in India. Hence, different types of soil will produce different kinds of plants. You will not see lush green plants or trees growing on sandy soil. Similarly, cotton grows in black soil. So you will not find them growing in red soil. So that's the role of soil. Going to the second category, Climate. Temperature plays an important role in the growth of plants and trees because with temperature, the air, humidity in the environment changes. That's why you will see as we go away from the equator, temperature decreases and the type of vegetation cover also changes. Near the equator, you will find evergreen forest where trees such as rosewood, mahogany are found. But then if you go to Himalaya, there you will find coniferous forest where trees such as pine, cedar, deodar are found. So that's the role of temperature. So in this box, you can see the temperature characteristics of the vegetation zones. So if you look at the picture below, this is how the earth is divided in terms of zones. So in the middle, you have the equator and the region between Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn is called torrid zone or you can also call it as subtropical zone. And then above that, you have the temperate zone and at the end, we have frigid zone. And with the above table, you can see as we go down from top, that is from tropical to alpine region. So alpine is nothing but frigid zone. You see the temperature decreases. In other words, we can also say that as we move away from the equator, both in the northern and the southern hemisphere, the temperature decreases. Now let's read about ecosystem. So what is the meaning of ecosystem? It is a community in which many different organisms interact with their physical environment. So basically it's a complex network which is interconnected. Now what I mean by that is, read this line. The nature of the plants in an area to a large extent determines the animal life in that area. Now I want you to look at this food chain of animals in forest. So at the beginning we have a tree or a plant. So small insects and bugs, they rely on plants. They eat plants, leaves and other parts of the tree. Now apart from insects and bugs, there are animals like rabbit and goat. They also eat plants because they are herbivorous. Now from here the chain starts. Now just look at how these animals are eaten by an another set of bigger animals. And then when animals die, the fungi breaks the bodies down and turns them into nutrients. And with the help of sunlight and water, they are grown into trees and plants again. So this is what is the meaning of ecosystem. So this entire ecosystem is based on plants or trees, which is called vegetation. So when we change the vegetation, it also affects the lives of the animal. Now in this entire ecosystem, even human beings are part of it and they are very integral part of it. And since we human beings have brains, we are not only intelligent, but we are also dangerous because we use these resources and trees for various purposes, from building houses to furniture and, and all those sort of things. Now, overutilization of these resources will definitely hurt the ecosystem. And this kind of overutilization can cause ecological imbalance. And if there is no plants or animals, even we human cannot survive because we are also dependent on them for food. So I hope you understand the cycle. Now let's read about the different types of vegetation. Now typically we have five major types of vegetation. They are tropical rainforest, tropical deciduous forest, tropical thorn forest 
and scrubs, montane forest and mangrove forest. So let's read about each one of them in brief. Now let's read about tropical rainforest. So these type of forests are found at a place where there is heavy rainfall. We are talking about more than 200 centimeters. So if you look at this map, you can pretty much figure out which are the places that receive more than 200 centimeter of rainfall. Now in these forests, the trees are very tall with height of 60 meters and more. So this region is usually warm and wet. They're excellent for the growth of trees, shrubs and creepers. The words warm and wet are mentioned because tropical. The meaning of tropical is where there is ample of sunshine. That's why it's very warm over there and wet because it's tropical rainforest. So if there is rain, it has to be wet. So the type of trees that are found in these forests are mahogany, rosewood and rubber. So these type of forests are usually found in Western Ghats, West Bengal, Assam, Meghalaya and other northeastern states. And we can also conclude by saying that these states are also the places where you have more than 200 centimeter of rainfall. Now let's read about the next forest, tropical deciduous forest. So these are the most found forest in India. Now if you look at this map, the majority portion of the color gray is what tropical deciduous forest represent. So these type of forests are found in regions that receive rainfall between 70 to 200 centimeter. The trees in this forest shed their leaves in summer. So if you see the meaning of deciduous itself is shredding their leaves. Therefore it's pretty easy to understand that these type of forest will have trees that shed their leaves in summer. Tropical deciduous forest is divided into two types, dry deciduous and moist deciduous. So by the name moist deciduous, you can pretty much figure out that it consists of water. Therefore moist deciduous forest are found in region that has 100 to 200 centimeter of rainfall. Now the types of trees that are found in this forest are teak, bamboos, sal, people, neem, seashum and sandalwood. So the places where we can find tropical deciduous forest are regions of Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, Odisha, Maharashtra, some parts of Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh. So these are the places. Now let's read about thorn forest and scrubs. So these type of forests are found in regions with less than 70 cm of rainfall. Now by the name of the forest, you can easily figure out that it consists of thorny trees and bushes. Some of the main plant species that are found are acacias, palms, euphobias and cacti. These trees also have long roots in the soil so that it can get maximum moisture. So these type of forests are usually found in semi-arid areas of Gujarat, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Uttar Pradesh and Haryana. Now let's read about montane forests. So always remember this forest is found wherever there is mountains. And in India, we have mountains in southwestern Ghats, that is in regions of Karnataka, Kerala and Tamil Nadu. And then we have mountains in southern part of Himalayas, that is the Shivalik range. And then we have mountains in the northeastern India. So these places have good amount of elevation or slope that gives rise to mountain forest. Now here is a fact, as we go up in the air, the temperature decreases. Now having said that, the temperature of the mountainous region are much cooler than the plain areas. Therefore, with this change in the temperature, there will be a change in the vegetation as well. So the kind of trees that we see in tropical rainforest or tropical deciduous forest, they are totally different from the trees that are present in mountainous region. Now with the similar principle, we can also see that as we move away from the equator towards the poles areas, that is the North Pole and the South Pole, there the temperature decreases. Therefore, there will be a change in the pattern of natural vegetation. So some of the trees that are present in these forests are oaks, sal, junipers, pines and birch. Now in the region of cold areas, that is the southern part of Himalayas near the Shivalik range, we will see mosses and lichens, they adapt on these vegetation. Coming to the last forest, mangrove forests. Now this type of forest is found near coastal areas with tides. Now tides are important because they will help the mud and silt get accumulated on the coast. In Hindi we call it as kichar or daldal. In these forests you will find plants with roots submerged under water. I want you to watch this clip and get a better understanding as to what I mean. Yeah, so those are mangrove forests. They are found in the deltas of the rivers Ganga, Brahmaputra, Mahanadi, Krishna, Godavari and Kaveri. So deltas are the region where you will find lot of mud and silt. They are accumulated over the time with the help of tides. So with this we have covered all the major types of vegetation in India. Now let's read about the wildlife of our country. So wildlife is also called as fauna. Just look at the diversity of the animal species. We have 89,000 variety of them and then 1200 species of birds. 
which constitute to 13% of the world's total. And then we have 2500 species of fish, which again accounts to 12% of the world's stock. Then another 5 to 8% of the world's amphibian reptiles and mammals are found in India. So these are some statistical figures. You don't have to remember all of this. Just have a quick glance on them. So you can find elephants in Assam, Karnataka and Kerala. And then you have one horned rhinoceros, which you can find in the swampy and marshy lands of Assam and West Bengal. So swampy and marshy are nothing but uh, mangroves, which, is, which you will find near the Sundarban Delta. Then you'll have a lot of wild asses, camels near run of Kutch, which is in Gujarat. So all these kind of things, just have a quick glance at them, that's it. You don't have to remember everything. Again, India is the only country with tigers and lions. No other country has that in the world. You'll find lions in the Gir forest of Gujarat. And similarly, tigers are found in the forest of Madhya Pradesh or in the Sundarbans of West Bengal. So here you'll find white tiger. In other words, they are called Bengal tigers. In the cold region of Himalaya and Ladakh, which are at very high altitudes, there you'll find yak, then shaggy horned wild ox, you'll have Tibetan antelope, then blue sheep, wild sheep, all these sort of thick skin animals. You have bear, snow leopard, then rare red panda. So again, just have a glance at them. You don't have to remember every single thing. So this map represents all the wildlife reserves in India. So let's see something which are very important, like the Corbett Park, which is in Uttarakhand. Remember that. Then you have Ranthambur, which is in Rajasthan. You have Kaziranga in Assam. Then you have Manas and Mahanadi. Then coming to the Southern Hemisphere, you have Gir Forest in Gujarat. Then you have Bandipur in Kerala. And then we have Periyar in Kerala as well. So these are few of the wildlife reserve. Just go through them and uh, you'll have a nice understanding as to uh, where they are. And these are pretty much helpful from MCQ point of view and in the examination because they seem to be asking all these sort of questions regularly. Now there are 14 biosphere reserves that have been set up in India to protect the plants and animals. Their names are out here. So you just have to look at them and read them because I'm not going to read them, but I'm going to show it to you on the map. So let's come from the north to the east, then to the center and then to the south. So the Nanda Devi Biosphere Reserve is in Uttarakhand. And then you have Kanchanjunga Biosphere Reserve, which is near River Tista and lies in the part of Sikkim. Then to the extreme east, we have the Hang and the Bang, which is in Arunachal Pradesh. And below that, we have the Bru Saikova, which is in Assam. And the Manas Reserve is in Assam as well. And then below that, we have Nokrek, which is in Meghalaya. And below that, we have Sundarban, that is in West Bengal. And to the left side of that, we have Achanakmar Amarkantak, which is in Chhattisgarh, Jabalpur. And then to the left of it, we have Panchmari, which is in Madhya Pradesh. And then coming down, we have Simplipal, which is in Odisha. And coming to the southern side, we have Nilgiris in Karnataka. Below that, we have Agastya Malai, which is in Kerala. And to the right of that, we have Gulf of Manar, which is in the coastal part of Tamil Nadu. And then finally, we have Great Nicobar Biosphere Reserve, which is in Andaman and Nicobar. So these are the 14 biosphere reserves that has been set up in the country to protect the flora and fauna. Just go through that map section again and again, and it will be pretty clear to you. So some of the projects such as the Project Tiger, Project Rhino and Project Great Indian Bustard has been set up by the Government of India for protecting these animals. And then we also have 89 national parks and 49 wildlife sanctuaries and zoological gardens that takes care of our natural heritage. And with this, we have come to an end of this chapter. I hope you found this informative. If you enjoyed these videos and see a purpose behind watching them, please like the video and comment down below. Until then, catch you guys later and talk to you guys on the next one. Peace.